With all this time that they've been in the mechanical keyboard game, Vortex have been the guys that brought out the non-typical layouts to the masses, especially in recent times. But today, this is probably one of their more functional ones in their lineup, the Tab 90. Opening out the box, we have a USB Type-C cable, and then the keyboard itself. So super bare bones, just like the Vortex Cypher I checked out, still would be nice to get a keycap puller though. This is part of their Tab lineup, so first of all, there's the Tab 90M, which is the metal version of this, and comes with different keycaps. It's just like the Core, Race 3, and Vibe in regards to its enclosure design, but it's not wireless. And then we have this, the Tab 90, and also the Tab 75, and the Tab 60. And those are more or less the same as this, but different sizes. Anyway, it feels pretty good in the hands, but I did get quite a plasticky vibe to it. I don't really know why, like most boards are like this with a complete plastic enclosure, but I just felt it didn't feel that premium, but there's minimal flex to it, and it's packing some decent weight at just under a kilogram. Perhaps it's because of its simplicity in that there's a healthy amount of plastic, so we have just a rounded rectangular design with flat sides, there's no chamfering or tapering to make it appear to be slimmer, and even the bezels are decently thick, with a chunkier chin as well. But I do love how it looks, it's super clean as you can see, and what makes it even more so are these DSA profile keycaps. The DSA profile refers to the shape of the keycap, so these are uniform caps and are all the same height, and there's no sculpting. And they've done this with their Core and the Race 3, but this time, they've gone with the super simple monochromatic scheme. The legends are clean and simple as well, and from looking at it, they seem pretty straight now. Like with the Race 3 and Vibe, the legends were a bit up and down and misaligned, but here, they're pretty good. What also contributes to its clean yet unique look is of course this layout. So this is the first of its kind for Vortex. For the most part, they've stuck to smaller layouts, and the vibe was a real unique one, but this is, I think, one that will be more accessible to use for a lot of people, in that it's essentially a full-size keyboard, and you won't be relying as much on layers, combos, and secondary functions. The interesting thing is that this actually has 105 keys, which is one more than the typical full-sized at 104. And I really do like this layout because the usual approach is the 96 key layout, like the XD96. So we have our dedicated arrow keys and numpad that people love, but they've kept the numpad standard but slip in the nav keys over here. And it makes sense, that's how it would look like if you squeezed a full size board. And I've thoroughly loved using it. It's about two columns shorter than a full sized and two wider than a 10 keyless. It may not seem like much, but that bit more space makes a difference in not taking up so much room on your desk. And as said before, there's no real compromise since nothing is missing. Often you'll see a numpad cut out a bit, but it's all standard there, so for all the heavy numpad users, it'll be absolutely fine. However, being a Vortex keyboard, we get the usual onboard programming. Since there wasn't any manual in the box, we have to go to the Vortex website, and there's one for the Tab 90M, but it works out for this as well. So we can switch between operating systems, and also between QWERTY, Colmac, and Dvorak, and we have the programming which is done all on board, as the tab isn't included in the MPC interface. So we have the default, and then three extra customizable layers. So I'll pick layer 1, and the LED under the spacebar lights up red. Then to enter the programming mode, press PN plus left control, and the caps lock key will start flashing. Then pick your desired key, I'll press Q, and then put in what you want to be recorded, which has a limit of 32 keystrokes. Then press PN, which will steady the caps lock LED, and if you want to program more keys, repeat that. Otherwise, press PN plus left control again, to exit the programming mode. And that's it, it's pretty simple and somewhat limiting, but it's what Vortex have had on their boards for forever now, but it's always good to have the option. Anyway, back to the keyboard. On the rear, there's a USB Type-C port, so yet another board with that, which is cool. And looking at the side profile, it does have a natural inclination, which is a bit more than usual because if we look at the bottom, there are no flip-up feed. 
Personally, it's no issue at all for me as I find it comfortable and you don't want it to angle too much anyway because the strain it causes on your wrists. But some people do like a bit more of an incline. And then we have our on and off switch because this is amazingly wireless, which I think is a first for Vortex. So if we open this door, we reveal a spot for two AAA batteries. So this isn't rechargeable like the majority of other wireless boards. I always have this problem when reviewing wireless keyboards in that I can't really test them properly because I don't have Bluetooth on my desktop and my laptop's Bluetooth is stuffed as well. So I just find it really difficult to actually use it in wireless mode for long periods. I tested it on my phone with just simple typing on Google Docs and it felt absolutely fine. I wasn't feeling any noticeable lag or latency which I have felt on some other boards before. For gaming, I don't really know, especially since I'm not much of a gamer, but from what I've tested, it only has 6 key rollover. I didn't see anything in the manual about it, but yeah, that may be a problem for some. It's using Bluetooth 3.0 instead of 4.0, so that mainly affects its power efficiency. It works from a long distance, I think this is about 20 meters away, and it was still working, but yeah, sorry, I just didn't use it in wireless mode enough to know its battery life, and I guess it depends on your batteries. I have Cherry MX Brown switches in mine, but it does come in most of the other Cherry MX variants, so this is a light tactile switch with a small bump halfway. The positive is that the stabs are pretty good, there's no rattle to them as they do come lubed, but the overall typing experience I personally feel is slightly hollow and empty feeling in a way, like it doesn't feel particularly solid or dense and in turn is quite loud for a Cherry MX Brown keyboard. To open up the keyboard there's a heap of Phillips head screws on the plate in which made me take off majority of the keycaps and then a bunch more on the bottom and then pry it apart to release the plastic tabs as per usual. The top plastic shell is simple, there's nothing much to it. The bottom plastic shell is pretty bare, there's no ribbing or reinforcement on the bottom surface, and it just has tapped plastic for the standoffs. So there's actually quite a bit of space here still, which may be why it doesn't feel particularly great to type on and slightly hollow. The connections for the batteries don't look particularly secure either as they're just held by a blob of solder. The plate is made from 1.5mm steel so nice and solid and gives the keyboard most of its weight and rigidity. Looking at the PCB and it's very clean with nice solder joints and all. Again, we have spots for surface mount device red, green, blue light emitting diodes, but they're just not here. And they've done this in the past as well, where these non-backlit boards would have the spots for the LEDs, and then they'd release an RGB version later on. And since it's all apart, I'll give it a paint job just because. It's a simple looking keyboard, so I'll paint it a nice glowy yellow, because yellow and grey always looks good.
Overall, I feel this keyboard ticks a lot of boxes. It isn't for everyone, and we can kind of see that it isn't really for gamers, but that's fine. Mechanical keyboards aren't just gaming keyboards like all the marketing makes them seem to be. I feel that this is a great home keyboard, or a work keyboard, potentially for the office. Everyone's situations are different, but often for work, people do prefer a full-size board, especially with the numpad, and this is perfect for that, and I think a lot of the value is in this awesome layout. And the wireless aspect just gives it more accessibility for different environments and use cases. You'll actually have a bit of a hard time trying to find a full-size wireless mechanical keyboard. They do exist, but there's not many of them, and I was actually surprised to find out that this was wireless, and it does work well. The keyboard looks great, it has a simple and clean design that I think will fit in anywhere. Well, I painted mine now, and I absolutely love it. Vortex do have the 75% and the 60% in their tab lineup, and the Tab 90M looks to have a few more features and a different look, but it doesn't have the wireless capabilities. So yeah, it's another great addition to the ever-growing Vortex lineup, which continues to reach different segments of the market.